Content is intended to provide accurate information, however, is not intended as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult a financial, legal, or tax professional for specific information regarding your individual situation. Opinions expressed and provided are for general informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Welcome to Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre, McIntyre Retirement Services, Northwest Ohio's retirement planning resource. And welcome into the program. This is your game plan for retirement with Northwestern Ohio's resource for a common sense approach to planning, helping to clarify and uncomplicate the financial, the investment, the retirement planning world. He is president and founder of McIntyre Retirement Services, Chris McIntyre. Chris, welcome back in. Good morning. Good to be with everybody here. I hope everybody's getting used to the new uh, the fall back in time here. It's a definitely an adjustment. I think as we all get older, it gets a little bit harder for sure. Yep. Yep. Well, daylight savings time is upon us. And remember setting those clocks back, it will be an adjustment. It seems like Chris, when it gets darker earlier and winter comes, we have to do more with less. We've got to pack more activities into those limited day time hours and daylight hours that we get. And I think financially, we are all trying to do a little more with less as well. We're trying to save more. We're trying to do more. We're trying to keep more of what we have. And these are common goals, I guess, with any prudent saver or investor, but especially important, I think, seeing everything that we've been through over the past couple years. And as we're getting ready to ramp into the holiday season will continue to be important for many. Certainly, Peter, that's a good point. You know, we, have, you know, with inflation out there right now, we have to, you know, we're buying less goods with more dollars, unfortunately. And uh, so, you know, uh, maintaining a proper budget and understanding your cash flow situation is very important. We've been very lucky for the last basically 20 years where we've had very little inflation. And now it has certainly gotten out of the out of the cage and hopefully they can contain it going into uh, 2022 and we don't get away with some of that runaway inflation, if you will, of the late 70s. Well, we had a, a different kind of economy back then. And so I've heard from many that we are simply in a different place. It's not the same contributing factors to today's inflation. A lot of this is uh, pent up increases that have not occurred naturally over the last decade or so. We have not seen a whole lot of inflation or, or price increases up until coronavirus. And then with coronavirus and COVID, all of the shutdowns, the slowdowns, the supply chains all got disrupted. And so we are now seeing that result, Chris, and we're feeling the pain anytime we go grocery shopping or go to the gas station pump. Certainly, you know, they've warned us of certain sh shortages in uh, in issues. So everybody's buying extra toilet paper at Costco and, Again. and so on and so forth. And, you know, you know me, I'm kind of a germaphobe. So I've got plenty of uh, disinfectant uh, left over from the initial pandemic. So I think I'm going to be OK or sell it on the black market. But, <laughs> you know, not to make light of any of this, but, you know, I mean, it, it's a uh, it's almost a gut check, if you will, you know, that, hey, you know, things were running pretty smoothly there. Uh, all in all, we had a pretty good economy uh, clicking along there, regardless of the politics of all of this. We're not going to get into that, but things were going very well. COVID hit certainly has disrupted the worldwide economic, uh, you know, production, supply and demand, energy you know, uh, lots of woes on shipping, on employment, especially because it's one thing having a lot of ships off the coast of Los Angeles with lots of goods ready to be distributed. But if there isn't enough truck drivers to take it to where it needs to go, because everything's got to be put on a truck at some point. Yeah, well, there's a lot of contributing factors here. And we know that it means that you must make your money behave better and smarter. And you've got to make more intelligent and thoughtful financial choices. And so today we're going to be talking about doing more with less, what you need to do to save more money, how you can be effective on, on both ends, uh, saving when you are making purchases, but also for retirement, perhaps one of our largest expenses, taxes, how we can be as effective as possible with taxes, what we need to be doing or thinking about now. There are certainly deadlines with the end of the year uh, nearly upon us here. And that's amazing to say this year has just flown by, but you need to 
act on many of the opportunities that we have available to us today and take advantage in order to be as efficient as possible. And so we'll be talking about that from both ends of the spectrum there with Chris McIntyre. And if you've got questions or concerns, if you'd like to formulate a plan, get your game plan for retirement put together, pick up the phone, give a call 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. Or you can go online, McIntyreRetirementServices.com. That is McIntyreRetirementServices.com. Now, Dave, uh, Dave Ramsey, Chris, put out a newsletter that was about how to save money, 22 simple tips. And Chris, I want to run through a few of these with you. I think generally all of these are pretty fantastic ideas, but number one was say goodbye to debt. And I know that you're not a big fan of having excessive or unnecessary debt, but I do want to ask, how important do you feel it is today to be completely debt-free, including the mortgage as we move into retirement? Interest rates are pretty low, especially on mortgages. Do, do we need to be completely debt-free? Yeah, it's a good analogy here to make is, um, you know, if I've got a $200,000 mortgage on my home, for example, but I'm paying 3% interest and I've got plenty of money in my investment accounts and I'm making more than 3%, you know, look, you're, you know, that's a positive arbitrage. Maybe you're making enough money off of your investment piece so you can make your mortgage payment. So, you know, it's a, that's a very good analogy. So, you know, we, we are cautious here when we give people advice as to whether or not they should, you know, pay the mortgage off just to pay the mortgage off because the, you know, you know, Dave, uh, obviously, Mr. Ramsey is one of those debt free type pieces, uh, uh, gives those types of pieces of advice. And that's kind of been his mantra forever, you know, but you have to adjust to the economics of the situation. You know, if interest rates were 7%, yeah, you certainly want to be uh, debt free. If interest rates are 3%, you know, what's the odds that you can invest and make more than 3% and come out ahead of the game? So, a, certainly a worthy analogy, you know, kind of on a case by case piece. And, you know, if somebody's got a lot of cash flow between Social Security and pensions, you know, they can probably afford to carry that mortgage payment and it doesn't bother them. Where other folks are just simply of that debt free mentality because, you know, that was the school of thought that they came up with. And that doesn't mean that's wrong. You know, might not be the ideal situation, but it gives them comfort. And there's certainly a value in that as well, Peter. Yeah, I think that perhaps nothing would give you as much financial confidence and, and peace of mind and just the a mental, emotional, psychological aspect of being completely debt-free entering into retirement would give you the freedom to maneuver, have a little bit of discretionary cash flow, but maybe with these low interest rates, not absolutely as necessary as it once was. On the other side of your example, though, Chris, if we've got excess cash just sitting around earning next to nothing in the bank, it might be worth taking a look at that cash to pay off a mortgage, even if it is at a low interest rate relatively. Yeah, no question about it. Again, that same analogy, if I've got money sitting in the bank earning nothing and a mortgage costing me three, three and a half, four percent, you know, you could certainly say, well, I'm, I'm making better use of that money because I'm saving me 4% by paying the mortgage off. And no question about that. So the math of the situation matters, ladies and gentlemen. And we want to, again, make smart moves and maneuvers with our money. We want to make sure that we are leveraging it to the fullest extent possible. And sometimes that takes sitting down and kind of analyzing where everything is at to make sure that you are making the best choices with your dollars. Pick up the phone, give Chris McIntyre a call, 800-868. 1194. That's 800 868 1194. Now, Chris, in this article, we're not going to spend time digging into each one of these, but there are several I think that are are worth noting. Cut down on your grocery budget. Think ahead when when going to the grocery store. That's that's a big one. Cancel automatic subscriptions. Buy generic. Cut ties with cable. Uh, save money automatically. Now, this is a big one in your world because the automatic nature uh, of regular contributions to investments is one of the foundational principles of long-term financial success. That dollar cost averaging really helps. And if we set it up automatically, oftentimes it gets done more often. Peter, you're exactly right. I just had a conversation with a, 
a client of ours, her younger daughter in the mid forties there, you know, was wondering about, you know, how can I maximize my savings and had an active plan where she works as a nurse. And my advice to her was, you know, make sure you're maximizing that employer sponsored plan. That's a payroll deduction. And, you know, because it's a 401k or a 403b, she can put in $19,500 a year. I said, if you can afford that, max that out, make sure you're doing that. Because just like you said, you're buying, you know, more shares of stock when the stock prices are lower, fewer share when the stock prices are higher. We call that dollar cost averaging, as you uh, had alluded to. And that's a long-term formula for success. So a, a, a win-win for for people who want to get started savings on, on how to properly invest, buy low, sell high kind of thing, uh, you know, buy more low, buy fewer shares when they're higher price is a, a wonderful scenario there for people to get started. And then it comes out of your paycheck so you don't miss it typically. Yep. Well, saving money really boils down to kind of a simple equation. You got to be earning more than you're spending. And then with that excess, you got to be smart with it. You got to put it to work for you. Um, sometimes it's an easier said than done type of thing. But if we make it automatic, then it happens more often than not. If we're paying attention to our spending and our income and our expenses, then we can work to make sure that we are making the most of each and every dollar. And those spending plans, as well as the question of what to do with the money that you have saved, how to properly invest and allocate to make the best use of your dollars. Those are questions that Chris McIntyre can work through with you, ladies and gentlemen. Pick up the phone, give a call, 800 868 one one nine four. That's eight hundred eight six eight eleven ninety four. Eight hundred eight six eight one one nine four. Now, Chris, it's been said that the home is the largest asset, uh, and many times we are finding today that the four hundred one k, because people have done that automatic savings, because they have been prudent over their working career, the four hundred one k can actually dwarf the size of the home. But another area that we really need to focus on saving on is on the tax bill that we'll have, especially in retirement, that 401k can build a pretty hefty balance, but it can build a pretty hefty tax liability as well. And right now may be a pretty key, crucial, critical opportunity for even avant savers and investors, those that have done a good job in building that 401k to really look at and evaluate how to minimize the tax liability on what is likely their largest asset. Yeah, the you know the largest piece of investments for the people listening to this show is no question about it, their IRA, their 401ks. The Roth IRAs came in later, so naturally they would have smaller balances in them. And you know, we have been huge advocates of tax planning and retirement strategies and you know, we've done more Roth conversions this year than any time in probably in my entire career. And, you know, it's nice that that clients see that. And so what we're wanting to do is take funds out of the traditional IRAs or even the 401ks and move them into Roth IRAs in bits and pieces to maximize the tax bracket they may currently be in, like the 12% tax bracket. We certainly want to maximize that. Uh, in 2025, that's going to revert back to a 15% tax bracket. So, you know, when would Warren Buffett pay taxes when they're high or when they're low? He would do it when it's low. And so what would Warren do, you know? Um, and we certainly are advocates of that for our clients as well. So Roth conversions are a huge strategy in for people that are still, that, you know, might be working, might be retired. So anybody can convert. Not everyone can contribute to a Roth IRA. And then the other piece of that, Peter, maybe you can play off of this with me as well, is when you're 70 and a half, you can do what are called qualified charitable distributions, right? So when you're 72 now, you have to take money out of your retirement account. That's a required minimum distribution. But at 70 and a half, they've kept this, that legislation in force you can pay money directly from your IRA to a qualified charitable or charity, I should say. So like a church, for example, so up to $100,000. So this year, and you know, we'll do this through the month of December as well, is paying 
people that are going to take their, let's say, a $10,000 required minimum distribution, and maybe they'll give half of that to the church or whatever charity. They don't have to pay tax on that $5,000. The church gets it income tax-free because they're a qualified charity, and it helps satisfy the required minimum distribution. So a great way to implore some tax strategies that, you know, otherwise, there'd be nothing else you could do. You, you still got, are going to create income tax when you take money from an IRA. So the qualified charitable distribution can be a wonderful way to do a little bit of tax planning with your own money. All right. Well, Chris, you hit on a number of different topics. I'd like to quickly recap and then kind of go into them one by one, because I think each one takes uh, and and deserves a little time and attention. Um, the tax rate changes that we will be facing. That is one. Uh, the IRA conversion question or contributions, RMDs, required minimum distributions, charitable qualified distributions, those are all topics that really, if they uh, may apply to you in your situation, you very much need to be paying attention and to look for opportunities. So number one, Chris, those tax rate changes, these are already laws. These are on the books. This will happen if nothing is done to continue the Trump era tax cuts. So in they end 2025 in 2026, we will be paying more in taxes. And it's not just those making $400,000 or more. It's not those with mega IRAs of $10 million or more. This is everyone across the board. You mentioned how the 12% bracket will become the 15. So obviously there's some room to save about 3% if we fall in that bracket. But the 22% bracket, and the 24% bracket will also be changing. They will become 25 and 28. So really two more additional brackets, Chris, are still going to be lower than where they will be moving to in just a few short years. And so dovetailing that into the second conversation about the Roth conversions, oftentimes sitting down, looking at the fact that we know tax rates are going to go up, it, it gives us a limited time window of opportunity where we can do some proactive saving on taxes, but only if we are proactive and the rest of the year until December 31st is one of just a few limited number of years that we have left to do that over. Absolutely, Peter. And remember, you know, tax cuts are never made permanent. They're made for 10 year segments. That's how the government works. They typically will do these for 10 year pieces, 10 year time frame. So we're coming up uh, in 2025 on mandated tax increases from the uh, you know, from the 12% bracket all the way up, basically. I, I, uh, I love how they do that. So the new guys can always say, well, it wasn't me who did that. So that, that was the last guy that did that. Yeah, I cut your taxes. I didn't increase your taxes. It's, you know, it, it, it's in line with the, you know, we've been hearing about this infrastructure bill and all this of three and a half trillion or something. That's only for 10 years. They don't talk about, okay, after that, how much more will it cost? So just to uh, frame a reference for everybody. Well, I've heard that, and this is just proposed at this point in time, it's not law yet, but that that legislation does away with a number of opportunities, including there is some language in that bill that puts a moratorium on Roth conversion. So we know that we've got the remainder of this year and up and through 2025 to do those Roth conversions at our current rates before tax rates go up. And missing that opportunity, especially if you've got a sizable amount in your 401k or your pension or your IRA that is tax deferred, that could be a very costly mistake. But Chris, we might not even have the opportunity to do that in about 10 years or so if that bill becomes law. You're exactly right, Peter. You know, the, the opportunities are here and present right now. The time to act for uh, tax strategies are right now. You know, we don't know where we're going to be in the future. Like Peter said, you know, legislative changes are really hard to gauge. You know, we have elections that come up every two years that can certainly upset the apple cart on what we thought we were going to do. And an example of that would be the SECURE Act, right? IRAs used to be able to be inherited and drawn out over the, the, the beneficiary's life expectancy. Now it's only 10 years. So, I mean, some major legislative changes happening here. And look at the debt that this country is under. There's certainly going to be some more changes on that. If they ever want to address paying for it, we'll make a joke about it. I hate to laugh about that, but it is what it is. 
Yeah, well, we seem to be operating under the pretense that we don't need to address that and we can just keep it going. That seems to be the way the government's operating. We know as individual households, if we hit our debt limit, we can't just uh, uh, agree to up it and increase it and then keep spending without having the revenue. But we need to understand that the way that those things get paid for is through taxes and taxes are likely to go up. That's why the remainder of the year 2021, that is a piece of your window of opportunity that you should be looking at taking advantage of, ladies and gentlemen, to minimize the taxes. We're talking about doing more with less, but a big part of that is keeping more of the money that you've worked so hard for of your life savings by being efficient and minimizing taxation, one of your largest known expenses in retirement. Chris McIntyre can help you through that, can show you those opportunities. Again, this is something that you should absolutely be taking advantage of here as we wrap up and, and head into the home stretch of 20 2021, but over the next several years, looking at how you can take advantage of our current lower tax rates. Give Chris a call, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. Speaking of the SECURE Act, Chris, that again segues into one of the topics you mentioned, required minimum distributions. Now, the age on that changed a couple of years ago from 70 and a half to 72, but basically that's now caught up with us and anyone born before in 1949 or before you're looking at taking those required minimum distributions and that's another big one that you have to do before the end of the year yes peter and uh you know you don't want to forget about that one because uh, the penalty on that is 50 percent of what the distribution should have been and so a couple of, of, of important topics here is you know we've got some folks that are listening out here that probably have a 401k at an old retirement plan, but it's still titled as a 401k. They may have an IRA as well. And when it comes to the required minimum distribution, you can aggregate your IRAs together. So if you had three IRAs, you could take the distribution out of just one of them to satisfy all three. We do that a number of times for clients. If you have an IRA and a 401k, you have to take a distribution out of each different type of retirement plan. So have to be very careful with that and uh, so you don't get yourself into that penalty phase and then beg for forgiveness. Like we say, there are some, you know, every once in a while people will forget to take one out of one. They've got someplace else, that type of thing. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to say it's happened two times in 20 years for us, but uh, it, it, it can be rare, but uh, there is forgiveness. They're not out to get you, folks. Well, that's a little bit of the double-edged sword of the way that we save for retirement, because earlier in the program, Chris, we talked about how beneficial it was to set things up so that we're saving and contributing automatically. And that way, at least it happens. And it's fantastic that it does. However, that does put things a little bit out of sight, out of mind. We also need to be cognizant of our money and not have it so out of sight, out of mind that we forget to do the important routine things such as rebalancing and monitoring for fees or expenses, looking at opportunities for better allocation, doing things like proactive tax plans, and especially once we get to the age, not forgetting or overlooking those required minimum distributions, one of the heftiest personal penalties that the IRS levies, 50% penalty, and then you know penalties being separate and different than taxes, a 50% penalty, and then taxes on the full amount on top of that. So it's not, not, not a, a cost that most people are, are looking forward to uh, encountering. And, and if you're proactive and paying attention, you won't. It's easy. Yeah. And many people set their required minimum distribution so that they come out you know, on an annual basis where they're systematic is probably a good word to use. But not everybody does that. You know, we have a number of folks that you know want to pick and choose which account they take them from based off of the investment success of the year. And you know, and so we're in the middle of doing that right now, probably five to seven times a week, or five to ten times a week at least right now on uh, making sure the the required minimum distributions we call them RMDs are set up correctly here. And you know, and do we need to adjust the tax withholding as well? So if somebody said, well, last year you know I got a big re re refund back, our income hasn't changed. Should we lower the tax amount because? You know, why let the government hang on to it for a year because you don't earn any interest off of uh, overpayment and taxes. And, you know, on the other side of that coin, 
some people like to get money back as well in, in April and they use it over the summer months. My dad would be one of those. Yeah. Well, again, opportunities to be m m more uh, intelligent, make smarter moves with your money. You've got to get the education and, and having an experienced, qualified professional certainly can be beneficial in those efforts. Pick up the phone, give a call to Chris McIntyre, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. You mentioned one final one that I wanted to cover in a little bit more detail. Chris, if we are charitably inclined, giving to our church, a, a charity, a nonprofit uh, organization, even a school or an alma mater, there are ways to do that and, and still get deductions. And then one of the best ones, if we are in the situation where we are 70 and a half or above or taking those RMDs, that qualified charitable distribution from an IRA it's one of the only opportunities, as I see it in the tax code, where money truly is never taxed. Absolutely. And, you know, that's the best part of money that there truly is. You know, the best income tax rate to pay is zero. So, um, you know, hard to get there with certain aspects of it, but you want to control the best taxation of it. And, you know, Roth IRAs can be a wonderful element there. You know, we can't discount the use of a properly funded life insurance policy that has cash reserves in it as well and the wonderful tax benefits that that provides, not the death benefit, but the, the income tax-free uh, death benefit side of that. Um, so life insurance, wonderful tax pieces as well. Roth IRAs, wonderful income tax pieces as well. You know, not to say in everybody out here, you got to go in, cash in your 401k that you did everything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. You know, you just have to adjust with the current economic conditions. When most of you were putting money in your 401k accounts, income tax rates were much higher than they are now. We're talking about coming up with a process to exit some of those dollars and put them into an account where you wouldn't have to pay any income tax when you use it down the road or when you pass it on to beneficiaries as well. You know, as we are moving towards uh, daylight savings and we're going to have to do more with less daylight, uh, looking around at the financial world, a lot of people are trying to be as efficient as possible and doing more with less there as well, or just being smarter with what we have. And certainly one of the best ways to do that is to pay less in taxes. A few year end deadlines that we have covered, um, making those Roth conversions, if you want to do that, you've got to do that by December 31st. Taking your RMD, if you are in that classification where you are required to take a minimum distribution, must be done by December 31st. If you'd like to make that charitable qualified distribution, must be done by December 31st. There are a few other strategies that can be done up until the time that you file your taxes, but those three major opportunities must be completed by the end of the year, which Chris means that we need to be proactive and probably get that process started well before the end of the year. Absolutely, Peter. Um, you know, now is the time. Uh, by the time you get into mid-December, a lot of our companies say, hey, here's a certain deadline that you have to have the paperwork in because we've got such a backlog and need to get things processed. Part of that's due to COVID. And again, part of that's just due to the onslaught of required minimum distributions, qualified charitable distributions that happen late in the year. And believe it or not, Peter, sometimes humans here in the United States procrastinate. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Chris, we've got a few topics that we're not going to have time to get to, but they do deserve mention. A few other ways that you help your clients there at McIntyre Retirement Services do more with their money. Saving on fees, avoiding losses, leveraging their money to, to, uh, to create more opportunities, uh, creating that lifetime income. All of those are ways to do more with less and, and ways that we can make our money uh, really give us. Uh, a more more bang for our buck, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, Peter. And again, you know, lots of opportunities out there. If you're working with a qualified financial professional, you know, they're they will highlight for you the the good, the bad, and the ugly of all the different pieces that are out here, and and trying to up your education level so that you can make a qualified decision. It's not always this is right, this is wrong. It's what's in your best interest over the course of time, and it's you know it, it, it's just something that we build a niche on. I like to think.
Those are the goals there at McIntyre Retirement Services. And if that sounds like something that is appealing to you that you would like to learn more about that could benefit you and your financial progress, ladies and gentlemen, pick up the phone, give Chris a call, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. The true benefit of this program, the information is fantastic, but being able to put it into action and utilizing it to improve your financial outlook. And Chris offers a individual consultation review and strategy session and waiving all costs or any costs that would be associated for radio show listeners. So no cost, no obligation for a opportunity to sit down with that qualified experienced professional craft and create or double check your game plan for retirement. Just give a call 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. 800-868-1194. Visit online McIntyre retirement services.com McIntyre retirement services.com. Chris, always a pleasure. We appreciate the guidance and perspective that you provide to Northwestern Ohio savers and investors here on the show. Peter, my pleasure to be with everybody. Stay safe out there. And, uh, you know, as we turn the clocks back, don't need a bunch of carbohydrates either over the winter. Visit McIntyreRetirementServices.com for many additional valuable resources, including other great episodes of Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre. Be sure to subscribe. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for assets under management while insurance products pay a commission which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation. Any comments regarding safe and secure investments and guaranteed income streams refer only to fixed insurance products. They do not refer in any way to securities or investment advisory products. Indexed or fixed annuities are not designed for short-term investments and may be subject to caps, restrictions, fees, and surrender charges as described in the annuity contract.